Hi guys, my name is Katie Blair. I've been teaching Biology 101 and 102 for going on six years now. And what I would like to do in the next series of videos is kind of walk you through the quick and dirty versions of a bunch of concepts that you're going to learn in Biology 101. I would like to make these easy to understand, try to give you just the basics of what you need so that when you walk into lecture and you hear them, you have a good foot to stand on. One of the concepts that you are guaranteed to hear about in Bio 101 lab is going to be about microscopes. So the next 10 minutes or so, we're going to talk about what the parts are, what they do, and how to use them. So just a little basic history. The three names that you need to be familiar with are Galileo Galilei, an Italian inventor, Antony van Leeuwenhoek, a Dutch inventor, and Robert Hooke, an English inventor. These were the guys that they consider the fathers of microscopy because of their work in the 16 and 1700s. If you look at the picture on the right here, this is Robert Hooke's early microscope. Over here is Leeuwen Hooke's early microscope. And then compare those to what you see for a compound, current compound light microscope. They look completely different. So we've obviously come a long way with technology. I want to do a straight up comparison of two of the microscopes that you're likely to see in lab. For our lab purposes, you're going to see the compound light in 101, and then 102, you'll be using the stereo microscope or the dissecting microscope pretty heavily. So I want to compare them based on four criteria. First, they both use light. The light will illuminate up into the specimen and make it easier to see. As far as the kind of objects that they view, the compound light needs to have specimens that are sliced. So they'll be sliced very, very paper thin and then put on a slide to be mounted. The stereo microscope is really useful because you can look at whole objects, which means you, you can also look at live objects. So if you're doing a study that has to do with small animals, such as insects, and you want to take a look at them, you would be using the stereo microscope instead of the compound light microscope. As far as their ocular or eyepiece magnification, this doesn't change. This is standard. So your ocular magnification in the compound light is 10 times what you would see normally with your naked eye. And in the stereo microscope, it's 20 times what you see normally with your naked eye. Although the stereo microscope has higher magnification in its oculars, the total overall magnification, you're going to get a higher magnification with the compound light than you will with the stereo microscope. All right, let's talk about what all the little parts and pieces are um, of the compound light microscope. We're going to leave pretty much all the other microscopes on the shelf for now. All right, I'm going to walk you through them, and it's going to highlight on the picture over here to the right what the parts are. So we'll talk about where they are and then what they do. So the first one is your oculars. These are the eye pieces, the parts that you look through. And we just said for the compound light microscope that that's going to be 10 times magnification or 10 times what you normally see with your eye. Next we have the body tube over here. The body tube is kind of an angle so it conducts light into your eyes. Next you have the arm, pretty straightforward. Whenever you carry the microscope, you're going to put one hand on the arm and then one hand underneath the base, just because they're really heavy and you don't want to drop them. The nose piece, the nose piece will actually rotate. And attached to the nose piece are your objective lenses. We have four of them, which we'll talk about in just one second. But when you want to change the magnification, you'll rotate the nose piece and it will click when each lens is in place. All right, your four objective lenses, these are variable lenses. Remember we said the ocular magnification couldn't change? We can change the objective lenses. So our shortest tube is going to be the scanning lens, and that's going to be four times magnification. Next up is the low power lens, which is 10 times magnification. High power is 40. And then oil immersion is 100 times. For our purposes in 101, we probably will not be using the oil immersion. But in microbiology, it's almost a guarantee. Next, we have the base, which is just the part that sits on the table. And this is also the other part that you're going to have your hand underneath when you're carrying the microscope. Next we have the illuminator, which is just a fancy name for the light source. Next we have the diaphragm. The diaphragm is going to be a little lever and it's going to open and close a hole to allow the light to be either dimmer or brighter, depending on. And immediately when you turn on the microscope, before you stare into it, turn the light down or else you'll give yourself a really bad migraine every time you're in lab. 
Next we have the condenser, and the condenser does exactly what it says it does. It condenses the light into a focused beam instead of it just going everywhere. Next we have the stage, which is going to be the platform that's going to hold our slide on it. And the stage will move up and down as we focus. There's going to be a stage clip on there, and a lot of microscopes have variations on this. Sometimes they look differently, but usually they'll open up to allow you to put your slide in there, and then they'll close on the slide and hold it steady. Next you have your stage knobs, and the stage knobs are really convenient so that once your slide is on your stage, you don't have to touch it ever again. You just move the stage knobs, which will move the stage back and forth and left and right to allow you to see the slide in your field of view. The outer fat knob that is on the side of the microscope is the course adjustment knob, and this is going to make your stage move up and down a great deal. So whenever you put your slide on first, you're always going to go to the course adjustment first. Get that slide and focus on the course adjustment, and then we can move to the fine adjustment. Fine adjustment means just there's going to be an itty bitty little change in the focus. Um, and this will be on high power or oil immersion. You never want to use the course adjustment on high power oil immersion, and we'll talk about why that is in just one second. So those are the parts and pieces of the microscope. Two that we need to mention that you will never see in lab are the electron microscopes. These, these guys are really big and really, really expensive. So a lot of the four-year colleges have them. We do not have them because we don't have a need for them. Two of them that we're going to talk about are the transmission electron microscope and the scanning electron microscope. Over here on the left, you can see a 2D image of a bacteria, and that's taken using a transmission electron microscope. Like the compound light microscope, everything that it views needs to be very, very thinly sliced. And then it's going to give you this two-dimensional, very magnified image. Next we have the scanning electron microscope. This is going to view the surfaces of whole objects. There's a whole bunch of things that need to happen to them in order for them to be seen through this, but we don't need to get into those. So it's similar to the stereo microscope in the fact that it views whole objects. We don't have to chop them up to look at them. And in this picture, you can see here, it's kind of a three-dimensional view. You get a depth of field there. This is actually pollen grains, so think about that next time you sneeze. All right, safety and care for the microscope. Some labs have different rules. These are our basic care for our microscope. A couple of do's. If you get your microscope and it's not working, tell your professor right away. That way we can note it and get it fixed. Next, adjust the light. If you look directly into the microscope, when you plug it in without adjusting the light, you're going to give yourself a horrible migraine. So turn the light down to a comfortable level. Next, if the lenses are dirty, clean them using only the lens cleaning paper, otherwise they may get scratched. When you're done with the microscope, don't just unplug it. Turn the light switch to off. Okay, then you're going to point the scanning lens down at the stage, which remember is the shortest one. You're going to cover that microscope, and then you're going to carry it with two hands, one on the arm, one on the base. A couple no-nos. Don't put your eyes directly on the oculars, because if you do, all you'll end up seeing is a bunch of eyelashes, so pull your eyes back a little bit. When you're done, don't wrap the cord around the base, because that will actually break the microscope. Wrap it in a rubber band. Okay. Again, don't use that coarse focus above low power, because it moves the stage up a lot. And if you have a slide there, you'll crack the slide and then glass will go everywhere. Make sure you always clean the slides off the microscope. And then don't be afraid to ask questions. If you don't know how something works, that's the whole point of being in lab is to learn it. So don't be afraid to ask your professor. All right, how do I work this thing? There's a whole lot of parts and pieces that we just talked about. So let's just go through some of the basic steps on how to do it. And again, don't stress out if you don't get it. It takes a lot of practice. All right, so first things you're going to do, secure that slide on the stage using the stage clips. Use that scanning or low power to find the slide. You're going to focus it with that course adjustment knob, and then you're going to turn the nose piece to rotate those lenses okay, to find the one you want. When it clicks into place, you know that it's set. And then you're going to finally focus on that fine adjustment knob. So we're going to run through this just real quick. All right, so there's our microscope. First thing you want to do is put that slide on the stage. Then you want to make sure the scanning or low power lens is pointing down at it, it's clicked in place, and then find whatever it is you're supposed to be looking at. Okay. You're going to use your course adjustment or the fat knob to find it, get it mostly into focus. 
Okay, when it's mostly into focus, you're going to turn that nose piece to the lens that you want, either low power, high power, or oil immersion. Okay, and then you're going to get it into final focus just using that fine focus. And then you should be set. Okay. One of the activities that we're going to do in lab is to make a um, slide out of our cheek cells. Really simple. Let's walk through how to do it. Um, sometimes we have toothpicks. Usually you use a swab. You're going to take a swab, swab the inside of your mouth, okay. then take that swab and transfer it onto the slide. You may not think that there's anything on there, but you'll usually see a film on there, but you're not going to be able to see it to the naked eye. Then you're going to take some dye, usually methylene blue, and you're going to put it right on where you swab that cotton swab. Okay. You're going to use that slide, put it on the microscope, just like we talked about, and when you get it into focus, you should see something like this. Okay. What are the dots in the center of the cells? Let's see how much you paid attention in your intro class. Those should be your nucleuses, okay, nuclei. Um, so if you see that, then you're on the right track. Those should be your cheek cells. So again, practice, practice, practice on this. You should be just fine after a few times. Hope that helped.